Back in 2015, Auckland's Public Transport Agency, Auckland Transport, announced plans to start building a light rail network in the city. But some nine years later, there's no light rail to speak of. And in fact, just a couple of days ago, New Zealand's government announced they were pulling the plug on the struggling project. Now, I like public transport and I'm never happy to see a project like this get cancelled. But that doesn't mean I can't understand why New Zealand made the decision that it did with this particular project. It's been going for close to a decade, already cost upwards of $200 million, but not a single metre of track had been laid. So, what went so disastrously wrong with Auckland's light rail project? Was it ever actually needed in the first place? And what does this mean for the future of public transport infrastructure in Auckland and New Zealand in general? Well, before we answer those questions, I think we need to understand what led to the project being considered in the first place. Like so many other cities around the world, Auckland actually used to have a pretty substantial tram network, reaching over 70 kilometres in length at its peak. But then, from about the middle of the last century, it was closed down as the government shifted its infrastructure spending away from public transport and towards cars. Over the decades, with little investment in public transport and a lot into demand-inducing roadways, it's not that surprising that Auckland is now a city plagued by traffic issues. In recent years, however, governments across the Western world have finally started to put at least some investment back into public transport infrastructure. You can see this elsewhere in places like the famously car-centric Los Angeles where multiple new metro projects are currently underway as well as places more close by, like Sydney, which has recently seen the largest expansion of its rail network in close to a century, with its new metro lines and also similarly controversial light rail project. And Auckland has not been left out of this. To help relieve some of the city's infamous traffic congestion, and to give a boost to the city's public transport network, the city undertook a series of public transport projects of its own. The two most notable ones were the City Rail Link, a new underground rail tunnel that aims to boost rail capacity through Auckland city centre, and the Airport Light Rail project. Now, the City Rail Link actually seems to be progressing fairly well, with construction well underway and an expected opening date of 2025. But the same cannot be said for the now cancelled Airport Light Rail project. The origins of this project can be found in 2015, when Auckland Transport called for studies on converting some of the city's busiest bus corridors into light rail. Various roads were considered for light rail, from Sandringham Road to Queen Street to Dominion Road. Auckland Transport had projected many of the bus routes on these roads would be reaching capacity in the coming years, and by converting them to light rail, the capacity could be increased with even street-running light rail offering double the capacity of buses running in dedicated lanes. An early proposal for the light rail featured a kind of orbital line that would connect Auckland Airport with the suburb of Botany Downs. This proposal did not pass through the city centre, and passengers travelling there would need to change at the existing station at Puhi Nui, hope I'm pronouncing that right, if they wanted to continue into the city. This line would have provided a new east-west link in Auckland's far southern suburbs, but this proposal didn't really go anywhere. However, in 2018, New Zealand's Transport Minister announced $28 billion of funding for Auckland's transport infrastructure, and part of that was to go towards the construction of a light rail system. Then, just a few days later, that same government unveiled the most promising light rail proposal yet. It called for the construction of two lines, one from the city centre to Westgate in the city's west, and a second from the city to the airport. Both lines would share a common set of track that would run along Queen Street from Bridomart, where the city's main train station is located, as well as a number of ferry lines, towards the southern end of the city centre. At the end of Queen Street, the lines would split. The first would proceed along the street a little further before it reached the northwestern motorway, where it would then run along the freeway's medium all the way to Westgate, bringing the line to a total of 18 kilometres. The second, airport-bound line would continue from the split running down the street for about another 6 kilometres via Dominion Road. Eventually, it would reach the southwestern motorway, which it would then run down for about 8 kilometres, including a potential interchange with the existing One Hunger train line, before heading down George Bolt Memorial Drive a further 5 kilometres to reach the airport. As part of this proposal, there were also potential plans to extend the northern section of the line to the existing but tiny tourist tram loop in the Wynyard Quarter on the city's northwestern edge. 
The estimated total cost of the project was $6 billion, which isn't super cheap, but for the distance of new track being added to the city's rail network, as well as the number of new areas gaining access to frequent rail service, I think it would have been easily worth the money. But if the project was so promising, what happened to it? Well, instead of getting on with construction, the planning scope started to creep up. That same year, with interest from private investment, alternative plans were drawn up that would have put the trains in a tunnel rather than running along the street for the inner city part of the line, with elevated tracks used for the more outer sections. While this would have cut the estimated journey time from the Auckland city centre to the airport from 47 minutes to just 30 minutes, it would also dramatically increase the project's cost. On top of that, while well, part of those speed increases would have come from the line being grade separated so it wouldn't need to be waiting at things like traffic lights, the other part came from fewer proposed stops, meaning the line would be able to serve fewer people. Further work on the project then stalled as the pandemic was happening, although the government did at the time announce they were still committed to the project. Once the pandemic was over, however, in 2022, the government confirmed they were still proceeding with the airport line, this time as a tunneled light rail line to Mount Roskill, and then an elevated line to the airport, at a cost of $14.6 billion, so a fair bit more than the $6 billion required for the street running lines, and without the Westgate line included in that cost. At the time, there were even proposals for future phases where the light rail would continue in a tunnel under Auckland's harbour to serve its northern suburbs as well. But fast forward to today, and New Zealand has a new party in power who campaigned on ditching the light rail project, and they kept that promise, with the project being cancelled just a couple of days ago. Now, for most voters, I don't think the light rail was the main reason for choosing that particular political party but I can see why for many people they would be frustrated enough with the project to want it gone. A lot of proposals had come and gone since the project had been announced, but despite hundreds of millions of dollars being spent, there was basically nothing to show for it. It seems like every time a concrete plan for the project appeared, somebody else wanted their say and the plans were changed. So instead of sticking with an initial good idea, the project kept getting sent back to the drawing board. So, as the scope of the project kept creeping up, and as these new ideas were tacked onto it, so did its cost. The initial plans for light rail from the city to Westgate and the airport using these street running sections might not have been 100% perfect, but they were practical and cost effective. Yes, travel times might have been a bit on the long side to get to the airport from the city, but the real benefits of the line would have come from the suburbs it connected up with on the way a benefit that would have been substantially reduced by the fewer stops allowed for in the later grade-separated plans. Airport rail links have a bit of a history of underperforming, at least initially, so while the airport connection was a big bonus, the fact that the line would have also formed an effective suburban transport line was, in my view, much more important. And if the airport patronage proved high enough, nothing needs to stop other rail connections being built in the future. As RM Transit has noted before, when you start putting light rails in tunnels, you kind of defeat the point of building light rail. I'll put a link to his video on the topic in the description if you want to know more. But basically, one of the main benefits of light rail is that it's cheap to build, but that's lost with tunneling. On top of that, tunneled light rail doesn't bring many of the benefits of a proper tunneled or elevated metro, especially the high capacities. You should either build a predominantly at-grade light rail system, or a fully grade separated metro. Going for something in between just gets you the worst of both worlds. Ultimately, while I'm not happy to see Auckland's light rail project get cancelled, the project probably should never have really gone ahead in the state it was in anyway. The cheaper street running 2018 proposal could have been a solid option, but the scope creep that affected this project left it unnecessarily expensive and not an overall good use of light rail as a transport mode. It's also disappointing that the new government in New Zealand hasn't proposed any alternatives to the project. But that's why it's so important transport projects like this are kept focused. We, unfortunately, live in a world where some groups will look for any excuse to cancel a transit project. And allowing projects to creep in scope and spend years going nowhere just gives them the perfect excuse to do so. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I also want to know if you guys think Auckland's light rail is worth salvaging. Should it be tried again? And if so, do you think there are ways you could make it better? 
And of course, I'm City Moose. Thanks for watching.